All right, good morning, welcome. First of all, I would like to read out a few lines. He whose reflective pure spirit sinks into Atma knows bliss inexpressible through words. These lines are taken from uh, an Upanishad. I would also like to sit and walk like that, he thought, so free so worthy, so unrestrained, so candid, so childlike and mysterious. A man only looks and walks like that when he has conquered his own self. I want to conquer myself. One more. I don't know anything about myself. The reason why I don't know about myself, the reason that I have remained alien to my own self, unknown to this one thing, to this single one thing, because I was afraid of myself, I was fleeing from myself. One can learn much from a river. I have learned that from a river, that everything comes back, everything returns. You too, Samana, will come back one day. All humans are subservient. All people are actually children. If a man has nothing to eat, fasting is the most intelligent thing one can do. Yes. If a man has nothing to eat, Fasting is the most intelligent thing one must do, or one man, one can do. The river knows everything. One can learn everything from the river. You have already learned from the river that it's good to strive downward, to sink, to seek to the depths. Present only exists for river. Not the shadow of the past, nor the shadow of the future. It's only in present. Very beautiful here. Yeah. Knowledge can be communicated. Knowledge can be communicated, but not wisdom. One can find it, live with it, fortify by it, or go through it, or experience wonders through it. But one cannot communicate it. Or teach it. Wisdom cannot be communicated, cannot be taught. Time is not real. And if time is not real, then the division line that divides or that lies between the world and the eternity, bliss and suffering between good and evil is also an illusion, means Time is only a veil. Time is only an illusion. I am a sinner. You are a sinner. But someday the sinner will be Brahma Ane again. Will someday attain Nirvana. Will someday become Buddha. So someday is an illusion. It means Buddha is already there in a sinner but only a realization is left. I'm going to start with the, a new series of videos where I would like to introduce you to uh, some of the books I believe one must read before dying, before death. These are the lines taken from one such book that I read years back and uh, this gratitude I must express to one of my worthy teachers whom I met during my master's in English literature, the most honorable and esteemed Dr. I.D. Sharma. He introduced me to this book. Rather, he gave me this book to me that I never returned. I couldn't muster the courage to return the book after reading it. Rather, he pleaded a couple of times to get the book back. I didn't return. The book is still with me like the most
precious treasure. And the name of the book is Siddhartha by a German writer, Hermann Hesse. This is a life transforming book. And I believe that everybody must read this book once before the completion of life. This is a must read book. This book is written by a German writer. Name of the writer is Hermann Hesse. Hermann Hesse was born in uh, Germany, somewhere near Kahl. And it is on the edge of uh, a forest where he was uh, born in a family which was associated with the missionaries. So he studied in a, uh, semi in a seminary. But uh, because of his religious constraints and religious faiths and beliefs, he gave up. He couldn't continue his studies and he was expelled from his school. Then he worked uh, at certain uh, bookshops as all authors used to do in those days. So he many years spent in the bookshops. But later he started writing and he became a very famous writer. So in 1922, uh, after visiting the East, he has written one book also, A Journey to the East, later. But this book, Siddhartha, he wrote in 1922, according to his experiences of the East. This book is life transforming. It makes a human understand the meaning of life and the vision of life and a perspective of life. How the journey of life proceeds, how the journey of life goes, it is very beautifully depicted with the help of the story of a young man. The plot is placed somewhere in the medieval India, in the times of Lord Buddha, when Lord Buddha just attained his nirvana, his salvation, and he was preaching, and he had millions of disciples. Lots of people turned monks and became his followers. In those times, there was a young man and uh, he was a son of a Brahmin and Brahmin was the head priest. So he was born in a very learned and intelligent family. He also became equally learned till his teens and uh, he attained all the knowledge of the holy scriptures and books of uh, Hinduism and Hindu mythology or Hindu religion. But still something was empty inside him and that emptiness was really a craving and that he was trying to understand and in that pursuit and his quest, he went for a search. So the rest of the book is all his quest and a search for finding the meaning of the self. Like at one moment, uh, there was a meeting of uh, Lord Buddha and uh, Siddhartha and there Siddhartha raises a question. Oh, illustrious one, I agree with your teachings. I have no doubts about your thoughts and your ideas that you give as your gospels and your sermons to your followers, to your disciples. But that very moment when you attained that nirvana, you got that liberation of yourself. How would you explain that? Where is that? My quest is that. If you can. Lord Buddha smiled and he left. So this was in the chapter Awakening. So there are different chapters. First was Brahmin's son and then there was Gautam, his meeting with Lord Buddha and then his awakening and he becomes a Shamana or a Samana. Those who believe in torturing their own self and getting a perfection or a purity. There he mastered the arts of the Samanas also, but still all in vain. It was all futile. He couldn't get anything out of it. Then the worldly journey starts. He experienced all the pleasures of the world. He came in contact with the prostitute Kamala and from her, he learned the art of physical carnal love, bodily love, and he mastered the art of loving. And she teaches him 
that pleasure of the body can be sought only if you know how to give it. In giving, you are getting it back. But he gets tired of it. He spent long duration in the world in sansara. He, un- he experienced the whole pleasures in the, every treasure of the sansara that the world could give. But it was also all useless. He couldn't get anything out of it that he was actually searching. His quest was still incomplete. He realizes the riches of the world. They, they are a disillusionment. They are all illusionary. They are not real. They are also like a veil in front of him that he wants to go through. He wants to go through. He gives up it also, all of a sudden. And then he goes to where he started from. And then he meets with a fairy man and by the side of the river, he finds his objective. What is the beautiful experience with the river that is so nicely explained and is so, so wonderful. And in the end, yes, he had one friend also. His name was uh, Govinda. Govinda kept coming time and again at different phases and different stages of his life. And he came back once again in the end also. When there was a meeting with between Govinda and Siddhartha once again, there a very beautiful metaphor was used by Siddhartha to explain the concept. He picked one stone and he says, I love this stone because this stone is going to convert into soil one day. At at one stage it would become soil and from soil it would convert into a plant and from plant it would be into an animal and then into a may, man or a spirit. So it means in this stone there is a spirit. So I love it. Same is the case with every object we are surrounded by. There is a feeling in everything. There is a spirit in everything. And that spirit is only for realization. So this stone is not just a stone. This twig of the tree is not just a twig of the tree. After a passage of time, after some time, they will get transformed. They will get transformed into something else. Or maybe one day I was a branch of the tree, but today I am here in flesh and blood. This is the transformation of the objects. And at one moment he says, you are a sinner, I am a sinner. But at one moment after the passage time, I would be having a realization of a nirvana. I would become a Brahm. I would become Buddha. It means that nirvana and that Buddha is within me, but there is only a lapse of time. When that lapse of time is not there, it means time is nothing. It's already there. If it is not there, why am I finding it? People, when they become seekers, they are searching for something. It means they have a goal. They set a goal. So they become a seek- they are seeking a goal. But when they become, they start finding something. There is no goal. There is only a journey. There is only a realization. All this type of concepts are very nicely interwoven and interlaced in this book, in this story. And it opens so many dimensions of the realization of life and self when you read it. Every time when you read it, something new is awakened within you and you have a better understanding of your living and your life. So I wish that whosoever is listening must at least read this book once. This is a wonderful, wonderful book must be read again and again. Rather, it's the most beautiful possession one can have with him or her. So do read the book written by Harman Hesse, Siddhartha. You would really enjoy it and it would be a wonderful experience and a most unforgettable experience for you. Thank you very much. I'll be back with some other book in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Keep watching.